It's freaking cold out there this morning, but the good news is, is the baby diapers won't smell. <laughs> if you're in the dumpster long enough, you see that immense amount of waste. It's changed my life in huge ways philosophically. I just don't like to buy stuff. I'm an RA, I have an A-plus meal plan, and mm -hmm. I sell dumpster stuff. I've never been to a place where the dumpster food is so good, really. One person's trash is another person's treasure. Let's go diving! <laughs> Just look at it all. What a beautiful, junky mess of rotten, rusty, mangy, musty, crummy, beautiful trash. Oh, I love trash. Anything dirty or dingy or dusty. Anything ragged or rotten or rusty. Yes, I love trash. If you really want to see something trashy, look at this. I have here a sneaker that's tattered and worn. It's all... sanitary landfill so it's covered every day and this even though this is caveman technology this is still the best we have The craziest thing is that people throw away valuable things that can be recycled. So we still have a long ways to go. You can see it right now. There's all sorts of paper fibers, cardboard, things that could be recycled very easily. As a matter of fact, it's over 30% of the materials that come in here could easily be recycled. I think people ought to be careful and people that throw away things ought to look at other methods to dispose of items. I have a PhD in literature and for you. And my husband's a PhD. My kids will be PhDs. <laughs> I teach a lot of PhD students. I teach at the college level. Sometimes I speak at Boulder or Wyoming. So I have sort of a circuit. You did. There's something about diving for me because I know it's not going to the dump. Like there's an added additional um, reason to do it. Um, part of that is is grabbing something before it's wasted in some sense of the word. And that's fun. I think that's very fun. Thumbs up basically means there's good stuff in here. Thumbs down means there's nothing really good in here. Another trick how you can tell if there's anything in there is you can tap the side of the dumpster and if it sounds hollow, you don't really go in there. If it sounds really light, you don't really go in there because it could be leaves or shredded paper. So that one looks I found a piece of granite, lots of table, lots of tables, lamps. We found lots of 
toys, lots of stuffed animals, just lots of stuff like that. Um, I go a lot with my mom. Usually I'm not the one climbing and digging everything out. Usually I'm the lookout or the one that gets lifted over the side of the dumpster to check to see if there's actually stuff besides foods and diapers. If it came to a situation where um, after a warning somebody continued to go into the dumpster, we would consider it trespassing rather than stealing because they're basically in a, uh, a place where they're not supposed to be. Uh, it would be highly unlikely that anybody would be jailed for being in a dumpster because of the overcrowding of the jail. Uh, we don't pe take people to jail for misdemeanors unless there's a compelling reason for that. Generally, we just try to, you know, warn them if they don't come back, then, then uh, you know, that's really what we're trying to get is that people aren't putting themselves in that dangerous situation, not uh, a situation where they can easily get hurt. We had an incident, and this has been several years ago, that uh, a lady was looking through one of the dumpsters for aluminum cans and was almost put into the trash truck because the uh, driver of the trash truck didn't realize she was in there. And um, he hooked up to the dumpster and was starting to dump it when he heard her screaming out from the dumpster. A lot of people uh, that I've encountered over the years are, are just looking for things for personal use, which, you know, isn't necessarily a, a bad thing in and of itself, but uh, again, it's a, a situation where where do you draw the line, you know, how do you let one person come in and take stuff and, and not another person, so. I also like finding that, like, stuff, like, for example, this shirt, these, things like that. One of the big things was my dress-up chest. That's the big chest in my room, and it's really useful. I, don't, I can't believe someone threw it away. I understand because of the nature of my background, I understand the waste stream and, and as the famous statement, to me famous statement of the, throw it away, there is no away, that everything on earth comes from the earth. This chair is a chair made in Malaysia out of Indonesian hardwoods and if you follow down the process of the of what happens to those not only the environment but the society of the people that live there because of we want a cheap ass chair there's no cost associated with buying that and throwing it away zero cost in our society I mean, this is not, there's, there's numerous reasons I do this. I, this is not the only reason. Number two, I have the scavenger gene. I do, I just have the scavenger gene. And I think it's just fascinating to see what's in there. I mean, you gotta look at what I used to do. I used to be a prospector. I went out and prospected for stuff because I like looking for stuff. And I really like looking for stuff and saying, oh, look at this, oh, isn't this interesting? And even if I don't find what I'm looking for, I think all these other things I find along the way are interesting, so I obviously have this scavenger gene that's in me, and I'm a happy person if I'm scavenging. <laughs> you got, nobody has no concept of what's thrown away in society, but... Jean-Francois Millet painted the Gleaners in 1857. The Gleaners is really a seminal painting from the movement called Realism that is associated with mid-19th century France. The painting is really interesting because um, it puts the poor front and center um, and monumentalizes them in a really interesting way. Most of these paintings, the realist paintings, 
were seen in the one public venue for seeing paintings, which is called the Salon. And the Salon audience was primarily an educated bourgeois or upper class audience. And uh, they were very frightened by these paintings because it was something that they wanted to ignore. The existence of people living in poverty disrupted their everyday life. When you look up gleaning in the in the card catalog, it's it's shelved right along um, border areas and poverty and m social marginality, and um, that distresses me that we think that we should only reuse something or glean something if we're economically forced into it or that we that we're a unique character. Um, I would like to see it brought more into the mainstream. When my son got called white trash um, be, at school and he came home crying, I decided right then and there to write a book about it because I wanted to pull it into the norm and um, describe our experience as a fun, happy one, uh, not one fraught with, with poverty or, or strangeness. And so the book has come out and it's gotten some good coverage and um, I think a lot of people have come forth and started talking to me about Yes, they, they wanted they always wanted to dumpster dive, but they just needed a friend to do it with, or they needed some encouragement, or they needed someone else to affirm that it was an okay thing to do. And we went to every dumpster on college, and we just decided to try them all. And Way more than I've ever been to. We oh, eat really, really healthy from dumpster diving, because like Great Harvest is where we get most of our bread. They don't use corn syrup or anything. Yeah. Today um, I looked at the options at, in the dorm and realized I would eat healthier from a dumpster <laughs> than I did using my meal swipe today. Mm -hmm. There's a whole lot of food in dumpsters, so we are very picky about what we take. Um, we got bread a little while ago, and we made sure like it was in a bag with only bread in it. The packages we took were still fully wrapped in like plastic, um, so they weren't really in contact with anything. That'd be bad. Um, a Gibbs, if it looks nasty, we don't take it. There's, there's hundreds of bagels, so you can choose the good ones and the bad ones. Um. Di diarrhea, throwing up, vom you know, vomiting, fever. Well, I'd be worried about things like E. coli, salmonella, shigella would be the big three that I would worry about, or Campylobacter jejuni. Personally, I, I think I would avoid the dumpster diving, but if someone has made the decision that this is what they're gonna do, they want to be cautious about assuming that the outsides of these foods are contaminated, and I would never eat any chicken, meat, fish that had sat in a dumpster because um, that allows time and temperature for the microbes to grow in the food, and they may or may not be able to kill that off with proper cooking. This is the bread from the supermarket. That's the one from the dumpster, and this is the one from the store. I just pushed on it, and then I got almost nothing. And the store one has two colonies, and the dumpster one has like nine, but a lot of them are really tiny. I'm honestly, I'm shocked how little we got, because you know, if I do anybody, any of your hands, if I do the floor, if I did this counter, it's covered in bacteria. I think if all they're putting in the dumpster is bags of bread, then it's probably pretty safe. But if they're putting in produce and chicken and beef and fish and all kinds of stuff, then the risk goes up. There's a risk in industrial food. I mean, you eat, you eat food that you buy off the shelf at a normal grocery store, and that's questionable. You don't know where that's been. You don't know how many hands have touched it. I mean, the E. coli outbreaks and the other food outbreaks that have happened, that food is every bit as dangerous or more dangerous than the food we send out our back door. Food waste is either the stuff that's good enough to still be eaten, is sent to Food Not Bombs, they pick it up for free, we give it to them for free, it's a nice symbiotic relationship. Same thing with John Anderson for all the compostable stuff, we just put it in a big bin that he provides us in the back, he comes weekly, he takes the bin, replaces it with a new empty one, takes it, feeds it to his worms, creates topsoil, sells it to gardeners, and makes a living off of other people's waste. Zero percent of our food waste goes to the landfill, it's all reused, it's all an input stream to something else, which is how food waste was always dealt with until the, the extreme industrialization of our current, whatever you call this, system, paradigm, culture.
if we have waste, if we have a broken spoon or whatever, a wooden spoon that we're sawing, we put it in the free bin in the back and it's gone. I mean, somebody takes it home and saws the broken piece off the end and uses a short spoon and they get along just fine with it. We take a, uh, 300, uh, 240 pounds of waste out of the waste stream every week and send it a different route. Office Max goes to the trouble of slashing all their stuff with a razor blade. So does REI. One of my mom's best office chairs was from a dumpster near Office Max, and they actually don't want dumpster divers, and you can tell because they slashed like a computer and they also slashed the chair that she got. Thanks Office Max for slashing those five really great office chairs that could have gone to like the women's shelter or something. Yeah, you know? I think they're like, they have to do it. For, it comes from corporate, and if they don't want to lose their job, you have to go through my corporate office. to anybody but the corporations of the world, the major, major, major corporations of the world control the politics in this through money and money speaks. changed my whole view of, of stuff, just stuff. There's too much of it and it, it has too much of a toll on our environment and our culture. I just need to take action and this is a, a way of taking action that fits within my life and lifestyle and my parameters and my personality. We're hoping that if we take it from a dumpster we kind of reduce the impact we do from buying products and the impact we get from throwing stuff away. My main message is just uh, affirming, yes indeedy, this is an okay thing to do and you're not a crazy nut for wanting to see stuff not go to the dump.